Alrighty. Um, okay, we all know that Blender is a pretty good piece of software, especially considering you know that it's free and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's you know things that it could pick up from other pieces of software. So uh, now I'm going to go through a few of the things that I think the Blender should uh, features it should steal from other pieces of software. So uh, first off, um, I you know I made a video before comparing Blender to Maya here and. You know, I thought that Blender is actually superior to Maya in many ways, but there's a lot of features in Maya that Blender could use. So, for example, this timeline here, uh, you can see here I've got the timeline for this uh, um, leg bone selected. And the only thing you got here, you can see the uh, ticks um, when you mouse over uh, a tick that uh, frame that has a keyframe on it. The name changes to orange. So that way you can tell you have keyframes there, but that's pretty much all you can do. All you can do is really zoom in and out on it, move it around. You can put markers like this one here. Those are useful, but uh, the Maya timeline is actually much, much better. So let's go ahead and get into that. So we just have a sphere here. So I'll go ahead and select everything in the channel box that we're going to keyframe and right click on it and key the select keyframes. All right. And then let's go ahead and move ahead to frame 30, for example. All right, so now we have two keyframes. I'll put another one in the middle. Now we have a little animation here of the ball moving around. But the Maya timeline is actually pretty cool because you can do a lot more than just you know zoom in and out on it. If you hold down Shift and start dragging, you'll drag like a selection box, and now you can move that keyframe around in time. You can drag the handles and scale the keys. So for example, Let's say that you want, instead of this to take 30 frames, you can shift select these frames and drag and move it out to, for example, 60 frames. So now you have an entirely different animation here. Um, you can also go ahead and you can select right click and copy. And then you could go ahead and paste those keys. So now you can, you can copy paste, you can do all your editing uh, keyframe editing right inside of this timeline. You don't really have to do uh, a lot of um, jumping back and forth between the dope sheet and stuff like that. You can, on a one by one basis, you know, individual objects. Obviously, uh, on an individual basis, you can you can easily uh, maneuver around uh, all your keys. Do a lot of editing right in here. You can, you know, and of course you can cut them and copy them and delete them and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, that's one thing I wish that uh, Blender would take on board. Uh, another nice animation feature that they have here is, okay, now in Blender you know we have um, layers. So you can see I've got the, uh, the curve that controls this guy, this Xenomorph's tail here, and these uh, helper items on a separate layer. Uh, so you've got different, you know, layers for different objects in your scene but there's no animation layers. Whatever animation you have, that's just what you have. Uh, you have, of course, the um, nonlinear editing feature, but that's a little bit different. The nonlinear edi editing feature, which I've covered in the past, is more like um, you can layer animation with that, but the one that's in Maya, the animation layers feature in Maya is a lot more uh, interesting. So let's, first I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, because that's kind of weird, all right. So, all right, so we have a uh, keyframe here that, oh, move that out into place. Okay, so that's some more normal, uh, normal animation there. So um, what I can do is I can add layers onto this base animation using this layers panel just by adding, clicking on the layer panel. And you'll see that um, it added a base animation layer for me already and it gave me an animation layer uh, on top of that. So it's got the green uh, icon on it, so that means that is what is selected right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select my scale and key those. And then we'll go to 30 and we'll start animating the scale of this object. Okay, so now we have it moving and scaling, but the nice thing about this is we can select this layer and we can turn it on or off and we can wait it. We can have it be 100% on or 100% off. So we can take an animation that already exists and we can add things onto this. You could, for example, have an um, animation of a character running and you could just take, like, for example, one arm 
and you could an animate that on a layer and then you could play with how much you want that to be added or, or, or not added with this weight parameter. And of course you can delete them, you can move them around, you can have one layer on top of the other so that one has more influence than the other. Uh, as you can see here we have it off, now we have it on. So that is a feature that I definitely wish that Blender would have. I haven't seen anything on it that, uh, now, like I said, the nonlinear editing is similar, but it's different in some ways. Um, this, I think, is a lot more, in, you know, easier to just kind of uh, pick up and go with, all right? So the, that's another one that I wish we had. Uh, and then I guess this brings us up, let's go to the animation tab here. And the other thing I, I wish that Blender had, uh, that they have in Maya here, is this object ghosting feature here. So as you can see, let's go ahead and turn this off so we can see this easier. All right, so as you can see here, we have the, um, the base object. And we have this, just by turning this on and off, we can see a, um, a ghostly outline, an uh, onion skin, basically. Now we have onion skinning in Blender, but it's just for, uh, it's just for the, um, which we call it, the, uh, Selected, uh, it's for um, armatures and bones. And let's see, where is that one at? It's on ghost. So we can just say step range. So you can see here, it works for armatures. So you can see as we're doing this, you can start to see uh, where the bones have been and will be in time as these ghostly outlines, all right? And that can be very uh, useful, but. Uh, it only works for uh, bones, uh, armatures. Uh, in Maya, you can do that for everything. Now, there is a thing in Blender, let's say new, and we'll add a sphere, and we will do a little simple animation here. Okay, very simple animation. Now, there is something, I think it's in the Object tab. Under Duplication, you can say Frames, and you can tell how many frames you want it to duplicate. So, for example, you can just duplicate a few. So this is, but this is actually creating actual copies of this. And um, as you can see, it's just creating it out like that. There's no ghosting. You can't tell by, uh, by the transparency of these objects, you know, how far um, away you are from the start points where um, here in Maya you can see that they're, they start to fade out uh, as they leave the, uh, the frame that you're currently on. So this, this type of thing in, in Maya is a lot more, you know, this is meant for animation, planning out your animation. Uh, this, this here, um, this uh, duplication thing here is just uh, duplicating these. This is more for modeling and stuff like that and for doing special modeling things. You don't really want to, uh, to do this. Um, so there, as far as I can tell from the research I've done, there's no way to, to onion skin actual objects. You can only do it with, um, you can only do it with, uh, you know, actual uh, bones and stuff like that. All right, uh, another thing here is a Daz 3D Studio, which is a freely available uh, poser type of, of uh, program. And another thing that I wish, I really wish Blender had, which it has right now when you first download Blender, you get this. Oh, actually you get this. And uh, you, you, get, you get some primitives. You get a monkey primitive. You get a box. You get a circle. And you get a sphere. But you don't get any actual content. When you're first confronted with the Blender interface, this is what you got, all right? You get a cube and a, and a stage. But uh, it would be really great if, for one thing, if Blender came with some content, especially some sample scenes, maybe libraries of uh, pre-made things. There's really only a few things. If you have, uh, if you do activate some of the add-ons, you'll get some more things. There's uh, Taurus Objects, Mechanical. There's Gears. You can add a gear and stuff like that. So there's some things you can add with add-ons. It would be great if it had actual content that came with it, you know, starting content. Uh, which also leads me to the next feature that I wish it had, which is, you can see both of these features in uh, the DAS Studio, which is, um, not only does it have a lot of content to first come out with, 
Let's drag her in here. All right, you can actually change this to be more or less feminine. And let's see here, where's the creatures? Anatomy, things like that. Um, you can see that this is visually represented by some icons here that shows you what it is. But you can actually just drag and drop. You have a huge content library here. That's really what Daz is, is kind of claim to fame is, is their library of pre-made content that you can use for your own stuff. But uh, it's also represented by an actual icon. You can, and there, there are, there's an entire library here, as you can see. There's tons of different stuff that you can, you can download and add to this library. And they're represented visually by an icon that looks like the thing that it is. So um, this would be really, really good if we had something like this in in Blender. Um, you know, be able to just add things like benches and um, things like this. So right now, Blender doesn't have. It's just got this. It's got it's got a cube, and that's it. So uh, something like that would be really, really good. Uh, all right, and uh, let's see, finally, this might take a little while to set up, so I might have to edit this. Okay, um, so the I've, I've done this in the past. In Blender, the dynamic uh, parenting feature is, uh, the constraint is really, really bad. I think it's one of the worst things that, the way it's implemented in Blender is, is really horrendous. I've covered this before uh, on Blender, so there's not really much need to go through it again. You already know the issues with that. Um, here's the one that exists in, in my here. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's select everything in the channel box and key it. All right. And um, so we'll select this. And then we'll select this. Then we'll go to the animation and we will do the parent constraint. Okay. So the first thing you'll notice when you add a const parent constraint in Maya, for example, is that it. Uh, the, the thing that you constrain doesn't jump away like it does in Blender. In Blender, when you constrain something, it, it automatically jumps uh, to some weird offset position. And that is really, really troubling. So uh, let's go ahead and select these guys. Shift select that, copy it. A little offset here. Oops, paste it. And then we can do the same here. We can shift select this. Copy. See, this is. Wouldn't this be nice if Blender had this? Oops. I think I copied a. Accidentally copied a. Uh, empty keyframe there. Paste. Okay. So now we have a. Uh, there we go. Now we have an animation of him bouncing the ball. So when he comes down, we want the ball to detach. All right, so uh, we'll say right here, frame 12, we'll have the ball detach. So let's go to frame 12. And you can see here what we've got is, um, we've got this blend parent. First of all, I'll go ahead and select everything and make a keyframe. And the blend parent, all you have to do is select that and key it, move to the next frame where you want to release and turn that off, all right? Blend parent is now off. So um, as you can see here, all right, it lets go. Now, if this was Blender, when we turned the uh, constraint off, this thing would have flown off in some weird direction and stuff. But now, since we're, we've got, you know, this is a much nicer system here, we can animate the ball bouncing. Of course, this doesn't make a lot of sense, but that's okay. And now we can go ahead and key that, and turn it back on. So it looks like the ball is bouncing in and out of his hand. As you can see, that was super, super easy to set up. And it didn't do anything weird. This is the thing I can't stand about the, the Blender uh, parenting constraint, is that it does all this weird stuff. And you basically have to uh, add one constraint after another in order to get it to be successful. In fact, what I usually do is just create a copy object and hide it and show it during certain frames instead of dealing with the uh, the pointlessness of, of the way the Blender um, constraint system is set up. All right, so those are some of the features. There's tons more, I'll probably have more for you, but those are some of the features that I really wish that Blender would go ahead and pilfer from other programs.